Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and before I get into this episode, I just want to send a shout out to Richard Morris and his friend Nathan. Richard sent me an email a few days ago letting me know that they appreciate the videos and that they have watched every single video that I have published here to Interactive Biology TV. And that is just awesome. Richard and Nathan, I hope you have gotten a tremendous amount of value and I hope that you continue to get a tremendous amount of value from the videos that you are watching here at Interactive Biology TV. Now I know there are so many of you out there that have been watching the videos and I want to let you know how much I appreciate every minute that you spend watching these videos. Thank you for every comment that has been left. Thank you for every question that has been asked and all of the feedback that I've been getting. It is just tremendous to know that this is helping so many people all over the world. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Inside this episode, episode 49, I'm going to be talking about what is stroke volume and how to calculate it. So let's just get right into it. When I'm talking about stroke volume, I'm talking about the amount of blood that is pumped by one ventricle during each heartbeat. So we know that the heart beats and we know that blood comes into the heart and when the ventricle contracts, it pushes that blood out to the rest of the body and to the lungs. We've looked at this in detail in episode 44, so if you need to review that, you can go back to episode 44 to check out those details. So here we're looking at the heart, and for right now we're just going to look at the left ventricle, and what is happening is blood is coming into the left atrium and then into the left ventricle. And when it reaches in the left ventricle, after a short period of time, the ventricles contract and that pushes blood, as you can see here, it pushes the blood out into the aorta and that then goes to the rest of the body. That's a brief overview, but once again, you can go back to episode 44 to check out more details about that. Now, there are a few definitions that I want you to know. Definition number one, systole. Systole is the contraction of the heart. Then we have diastole, and that's the relaxation of the heart. So systole is contraction, diastole is relaxation. Then we have the end diastolic volume, or the EDV, which is the amount of blood in the ventricle right before ventricular contraction. So right before the ventricle contracts, the amount of blood that we have in the ventricle, we call that the end diastolic volume, which makes sense. It's right at the end of diastole, so that's the end diastolic volume. Then, of course, we have the end systolic volume, which is the amount of blood left in the ventricle right after ventricular contraction. So when the ventricles contract and it pushes the blood out to the lungs and out to the rest of the body, the amount of blood that we have left over that is the end systolic volume, which once again makes sense because it's at the end of systole. With those definitions, let's look at a graph. All right, so what we have here is a graph. On the x-axis, we have time. On the y-axis, we have volume in milliliters. So we're looking at the amount of blood in the ventricle. And for this example, we're going to talk about the left ventricle, which is the one that pushes the blood into the aorta to go to the rest of the body. So let's say ventricular contraction has just finished. When that contraction is finished, the ventricle starts to get filled with blood again. So after that contraction, another cycle starts where blood flows into the ventricle. So here we have blood getting into the ventricle. At a certain point, we're going to have a more rapid filling and when it reaches this point and we're not going to talk about too many details where this part is concerned we're going to talk more about that in a later episode but let's say this is the point where the ventricle contracts what's going to happen here is when the ventricle contracts that's going to push the blood out of the ventricle and it's going to go to the rest of the body 
So here we have a certain amount of blood, and here we have a certain amount of blood. The amount of blood that we have in here, right before the contraction, we're going to call that the EDV. Once the contraction is over, we're going to call that the ESV. Now, the way we calculate the stroke volume is SV, stroke volume, is equal to EDV minus ESV. So, if the end diastolic volume is 120 milliliters of blood and the end systolic volume is around let's say it's 50 milliliters the stroke volume is going to be 120 milliliters minus 50 milliliters and that is going to be equal to 70 milliliters and I just realized here that I wrote 5 I meant to put 50 so I'm just gonna put that 0 here so 120 minus 50 is equal to 70 70 would be my stroke volume so once again the ventricle fills with blood at a certain point the ventricle contracts that pushes the blood out of the ventricle and to the rest of the body at the end of the contraction, we have an end systolic volume. If that end systolic volume is 50 milliliters and the end diastolic volume is 120 milliliters, the stroke volume will be 120 minus 50, and that's going to be equal to 70. That's pretty much it for this episode. Of course, if you want to see more, you can go to interactive-biology.com where we have more biology videos and many other resources. We're adding to the resources on a regular basis to try to help make biology fun. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.